you know Jerry? Now he's going to fill in his blank in a minute. And uh, we're going to let him just keep walking up here and give his testimony. And Gilbert's going to turn that microphone back on too, if you can. So we can uh, hear him. Thank you, sir. So let's pray for Jerry right now. God, I thank you for your grace. To me, uh, to Sarah playing the guitar, to everyone else in the room, and to Jerry. It's the same grace. It's the same grace of God for all of us. Not more for one and less for the other. Not a different one for this one, a different one for that one. The same grace of God for all of us here. And we thank you for the grace of God for Jerry. I thank you for the testimony. May it be true, solid, real. May Jesus Christ be glorified. We pray it in his name. Amen. Well, Jerry's one up there. He's getting ready. If he has any nerves, I don't know it. If he does, they're gone in Jesus' name. It's just us. And uh, get your Bibles ready. Whenever Jerry's done, we're going to give him some freedom. I want him to tell the story of God. We, we may read a little bit from Scripture and have a word from him as well. Jerry, you going up or are you staying down here? Right here. All right, let me, let me give you a microphone just in case. Sometimes I love to be the center of attention, but only in good ways. <laughs> in case you need a little bit Go for it, brother. All right, praise God. How are you doing this morning? Fine, yeah. sir. All right, you know, the devil is busy at all times. <laughs> this morning he tried to distract me from being here. I had a problem to get here to train. He had to switch over. So that delayed me about a good 10 minutes. But I continued doing what I was doing at the church. We were listening to one of my favorite songs. We need the lights on. Sorry. Which was one of my favorite songs is uh, by Kurt Franklin. It's called The Name of Jesus. Yes, sir. Uh, the Power of the Name of Jesus. And I just love that name and I just love that song because it's only by His grace and His power that I'm here where I'm at today, the person that I am. Amen. Amen. Here's a little bit of what happened throughout my life. I'm originally from Opelousa, Louisiana. I'm age 45. I had a good life as a child coming up. I was in the house. But there was lots of drugs, not drugs, I mean, uh, alcohol abuse. And uh, throughout all these different issues that was going on within the family, I adapted a whole lot of uh, those bad behaviors because I thought that was the right way to go in life. And as I stated, my parents, you know, they were alcoholics. But praise God for his grace, his gracious glory and mercy, they didn't need AAR, NA, or any of that stuff. They decided to make a conscious decision to let God be control and control of that situation, so they stopped drinking. Amen. But in the process Amen. of them drinking, as a child, I would wonder, well, what is this stuff doing that makes them act the way I did do? So I wanted to experiment. As a child, after we've seen enough of us, they fight my siblings and myself, we would talk, call ourselves, we, we was gonna hide this alcohol and stuff from my family. So in order for them not to find it, we decided we'd drink it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So after I started taking these different tastes of alcohol and stuff like that, you know, uh, as I started growing up to be a, a teenager, I started indulging even more in my brother. And uh, life started getting out of hand. I didn't understand what was going on because simple fact, you know, I was blind to the ways of mankind. And uh, I remember my father made a statement to me. He said, boy, he said, if you continue to drink and carry on the way you do, you're going to be in a position where you won't be able to get out. Mm. Later on in life, that happened. But in this process, when he stated that, I'm like, okay, when you guys did this, did that, it was okay. I was just an uh, obnoxious little brat, you know, not paying no attention to what my father was telling me. He said, you know, the way how you get drunk, because I used to get drunk to the point where I had blackouts. I wouldn't remember nothing, nothing, nothing. He said, the same way you get drunk and all this stuff, what you're doing, something depend on you, but you never, ever, Realize whether you did it or not because you're under so much of the influence of alcohol. And I said, well, it have not happened yet. Okay. Later on in line, I continued doing what I wanted to do with my brother and myself. And uh, my sister, uh, Barbara, you know, she uh, she's a Christian. She's saved. She stopped drinking by the grace of God and delivered her from it. And so she was trying to speak the word of God to me and stuff like that. I, I didn't want to hear any of that. When the people came to me, uh, brother, you know Jesus loved you, I didn't want to hear that. I would go the opposite way. When I seen him coming this way, I went that way immediately because I didn't want to hear anything about that. And uh, the word saved, I'm like, what do you mean saved? I didn't even know what that word meant. Well, brother, you know, you can reach out to God and God can save you. He can deliver you from these things that you got going on in your life. And uh, so she invited me to church over and over and over and over again. And so I finally took her up on the offer. And I went to church for the first time 
because I was born in, into a, going to a Catholic church. That's how I started going to a Pentecostal church. And uh, I liked what was being presented at that church because I, really I didn't know nothing about Jesus. The only thing I knew was go to Catholic church where you confess your sin to a man, a priest. And that's all I knew. Because like I said, I never knew that, you know. All thing I have to do is confess my sins to God, to Jesus Christ, and he is the ultimate forgiver of all sins. I never knew that. Amen. So, when I went to that church, they prayed for me and stuff like that. I went up for altar call, and that was one of the best feelings I've ever had in my entire life. I, I mean, I just weeped buckets of water because of all the, listen, the sin that was into my life, all the sin that was in my life. And from that point on, it was an ongoing thing. You know, I loved what I had going on in church. I loved what God was doing in my life. I was blessed. Going to, going to work, getting jobs uh, like never before in my life. Right. Because it's kind of hard to get jobs in Louisiana because of the rain season. You know, because it rained like 24-7, uh, 24 months out of, uh, out, out of the year. There is that many, but it's only 12. But uh, God was still working in my life. So I met a woman. And uh, by me going to church and stuff like that, the brothers in church clinging me and told my brother, brother Jerry, you know, what you're doing is not uh, quite in God's line. Uh, maybe that you want to talk to uh, Sister Rochelle and, you know, you guys can get married since you are a part of the family of God now. Because what you're doing, you are basically living in sin and fornication. And it was the God that was true. But at that point in time, I wasn't ready to get married. That was one of the last things on my mind was marriage. Because like I said, I still was irresponsible at the age of 17. So we wind up, we got married, and later on along the line, after my parents both passed away, I came to live here in South Carolina, California. And the relationship, it, it didn't, it, it wasn't as it should have been. So I felt a void in my life. Uh, I was looking for love in all the wrong places, the wrong kind of love. So when that void came into my life, I started experimenting, dealing drugs, selling drugs mm -hmm. with my brothers. And Later on online, the money was good. It was great money I was making. And so I would feel like, hey, you know, I'm staying up at this time in the uh, morning and day doing these drugs, selling these drugs. I need to stay up a little bit longer at night. I need something to help me. So I said, well, why don't you just try some of this, man? It'll help you stay up. So I feel like uh, an idiot and went on and indulged, experimenting with this stuff. Yes, it did keep me up for a while. But somewhere along the line, I didn't realize that it was going to cause me a major problem. It caused more problems than anything else in life that I could ever imagine. So in the process of me selling drugs, I became my own best customer. <laughs> became my own best customer. I used, started using regularly. And so my relationship with the woman that had my uh, beautiful children uh, and I, it was going to pieces. It was going to pieces. There was so much darkness in my life. I didn't know if I was gone or coming. I was, I was hurting my family more than more than I ever, ever thought I was doing because I was so blind, I didn't even know. I was hurting my children, I was hurting the woman that loved me, I, I hurt my family, you know, because of the fact that my mother, would, uh, when she was alive, she was always asking me, Jerry, when are you coming home in business? I said, well, Mom, I'm coming, don't worry about it. She said these words to me, and I'll never forget it. She said, boy, I'm going to be dead and gone before I ever see you again. And sure enough, mm -hmm. that's what happened. My mother passed away. I remember asking my sister Gloria, I said, well, Gloria, what mama died of? She said, Jerry, you want me to tell you the truth? She said, our mama about, uh, died of a broken heart. Mm. She really loved you. She worried herself to death about you. And that killed her. So in the process of hearing these words coming from my sister and the relationship uh, issues that I was going with, I, I just got full blown out of control using drugs. And uh, it arises that a situation went on between uh, my kid's mother and myself. That night, I thought about that all night. I said, you know what? I'm not doing that no more. There's no way in this world. Now, I reversed everything around like she was doing bad to me. That's how my mind was messed up. That next morning, what I did, I left. I said, I was going to the store. And this is 2014, and I haven't returned from that store yet. Yeah. It's not funny, yeah. but that's just how the devil had my yes, mind sir. twisted. Had my mind twisted. In the process of me leaving my family, I wind up homeless on the street for four years and something, mm -hmm. and it seemed like it was only one day. That's just how my mind was twisted and I was blind. Uh, I mean, I lived a life like living on the streets, 
uh, not able to take a shower, not able to have money for food and stuff like that, asking people for money and stuff like that. And then I started getting into trouble. I started uh, putting my hands on things that I know didn't belong to me. Started stealing to support my drug habit and right. stuff like that. And uh, I wound up putting myself in some trouble, started getting on probation and stuff like that. Just going in and out, in and out of jail. These people got tired of me real quick, real quick. Mm. So I remember one, one morning, I had been using drugs all, all day. So my body finally shut down on me. And I went to sleep. And I made a dream that I was behind up some big iron block and shared some views. I was behind some real tall fence, a real tall, tall fence with wire. I was dressed in orange, <laughs> in orange color. I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> I'm serious. God is my witness. I made that dream. Later on along the line, about three months after that dream, I find myself back in the courthouse and just say, Mr. Richards, or should I say Mr. Richard, that's how I'm going to pronounce. I'll give you chance after chance after chance. And what have you did? You haven't did nothing. The only chance you're going to get is to really go sit back and think about your actions. I went to state prison in 1999. That was a dream. I was buying some tall fins in an orange jumpsuit at Tracy. DBI State Prison. That was a dream. And uh, I didn't know what it meant. But in the process of me serving time in prison, that one little vacation I took. Mm -hmm. That was a vacation. That's all, the only thing was a vacation. Because I didn't learn my lesson after that. I had a chance to uh, call myself, you know, make my own mind up. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get out. I'm just going to drink a little bit. I'm not going to use a whole lot of drugs. I'm just going to use a little bit. You know, manipulate myself big time. Mm -hmm. And well, that's what the devil that did to me. Like I said, I was dancing on his way of his music. So I got out and wind up, I stayed out for, I think, four months. But then, three months after that, I was back in front of that same judge. The only thing the judge shook his head like that. He said, I got something for you, Mr. Richard. This here is going to really, really make you think. Because you, your pattern, your, your record that you're showing is not. It's just not helping. He said, this time I'm going to give you nine years mm. in state prison. Lord. Like, Lord, Lord, Lord. I didn't know what to do. I did not know what to do. I didn't even know about, like, how do you do nine years in state prison? You know, how do you do that? When I got there, I started counting days at a time. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one day is gone. So I still got 2,000 some days to do each day. I can't do it, Lord. I need your help. But I wasn't sincere about it. So while I was in, uh, there in the process, I met some good Christian brothers out there. And they really, really, really sent me down and engaged me with the words of the Bible, the knowledge of what they had. And, and I started attending them regularly. Uh, every day, you know, I was there for praise and worship. And God knows I don't have a good voice at all. But like I say, what did he say? Make a joy for me. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I saw my heart out to God. Man. I saw my heart out to God with uh, prayer and supplications, day and night, day and night. And, uh, as time passed, I just thought, you know, just started loving myself because I didn't love myself at one time. Not at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was able to love other people because that's what it took. That was God's way of breaking me. Because the only person I hung out with is people that did drugs. And only black people. Mm -hmm. Only black people in my life. Now, I, I ain't going to say it was racism, it's just that, you know, that is just why I was comfortable at. After he set me down and saw, put me around, <coughs> I got comfortable with everybody in my life, started embracing everybody, All right. who and what they are. And, uh, and all these scales started falling off, you know, and uh, I said, Lord, you're not thankful for what you're doing in my life. And also, you know, I prayed for another issue. I said, Lord, you know, I got anger issues. I really do. It remind me of Moses, you know. So I said, Lord, you know, you got to help me with that too, you know, give me patience. And what he started doing, oh, Lord, he started sending different people into my life. Because when, when you're in a setting where you have no choice but to deal with people, that's your patience. And you know, uh, it says, be careful what we pray for. And uh, I learned that. That's a very, very true statement. Be careful what you pray for. And from that point on, after the nine years and stuff, I got out and I was able to uh, be able to be uh, civilized in society uh, and embrace each and everything, you know, by using God as a tool of my source because he's the only source that I have in life that that's why I'm able to not worry about tomorrow. 
I worry about this moment right here because that, that's, you know, I'm going to stand in chair and find out, you know, I can leave him out of here. That is one thing I know I'm asking him to face uh, with the saints. And, you know, but God has been so good into my, in my life. You know, he delivered me from drugs and alcohol. It's over 13 years and something I have not indulged in that. Uh, Safe for relationships. Uh, I have a beautiful woman that I, I fell in love with. You know, I pray, Lord, please send me a, a church going woman. And uh, he did just that. I, you know, I love everything about her because she's a woman that's after the heart of God. And Lord, uh, I thank you for her. Yes, sir. And I uh, thank you for my wonderful kid, my kids. You know, after being away from them so long, I was like, I never ever left them. Never ever. You know, we got an uh, open relationship. We know we talk about anything. And you know, I just thank you for. Uh, accepting me back in their life because I caused my thoughts a lot of damage by being under uh, swear the devil, you know. And uh, I thank God for what he's doing in my life today, mainly, because uh, I see myself, I got upset a couple of days ago. I did not handle the situation. Maybe you all know that I, uh, I would like to go back home and visit my family. It's over 25 years I haven't seen my siblings. And I asked my probation officer if I could please get an out-of-state transfer. I was denied. I was hurt. For about a whole week or something, I was hurt to the point where I didn't eat for a whole week. Today was the first day I ate. I ate breakfast this morning for the first day. And uh, like I said, Lord, you know I'm tired. He said, okay, fool, you keep on bumping your head, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel good this morning about uh, the things that God did in my life. You know, uh, he allowed me to be here this morning just to share a part of my testimony. And I have so much, so much, so much yes, to say. But it'll all be done in uh, another time frame, you know. I just enjoy, you know, what he's doing in my life again. You know, how I got here, here, let's talk about how I got here at this church. I remember my uh, brother Richard, his wife, uh, Sister Young. I was doing uh, landscaping, because I love doing landscaping. And uh, she comes to me on my work that I do. And so uh, she said, uh, do you know Jesus? Mm -hmm. I said, yes, I do. She said, you want to come to church? I said, uh, where you go to church? So she told me, over here or something like that. She said, I'll be back, I'll be back. I'll be back with my husband and my daughter. We come to see you. And so they invited me to church. And here I am. This is the first time I've ever been to church where it's none but love. It's none but love. And I'm talking about real, genuine love. There's it no fake love about it. But that's the reason why, when I got in jail again, July the 10th, my goal was that I had to be here. Because when I left from here, June the 8th, 2013, I got arrested. Soon as I left church, it's a long story, I'm not going to get into that. But praise God, my goal is to be here. And I can say, hey, praise God, I thank Jesus for giving me the wisdom and the knowledge to know that, hey, that's what you need to be. You need to be with the saints. You know, because the world, you've turned your back on that. I've chosen you out of the world to, uh, to go amongst these people and make uh, disciples spread the word. Look what I did for you. You know, and uh, I thank God every day. Not just think about what he did for me. Oh, Lord, have mercy. The way my life was, I wouldn't wish that I'm one of my worst enemies. Mm. But like I said, you know, again, the song that I heard this morning, the name of Jesus, that power, if I was to say or doubt God in any way, I will be the biggest fool that ever walked the face of the earth because I know he's a deliverer. Because yes, I've, been, I've been to the market clay mm -hmm. and I know what he brought me up from and, I, and I'm, no, I'm not ashamed to say it. Right. You know, I praise and I thank you, you know, just for uh, being able to be here this morning to share my testimony. Because uh, I was to the point like, well, what am I going to tell him? He said, it's your story. You know what I did for him. Yes, sir. You know what I did for him. Yes, sir. So that's my testimony, a part of it, and you know I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, it's a privilege for me to be here this morning. I thought I'd been late, but praise God, I was right on time. <coughs> I think all of you.